Gaming and BS episode 196 coming to you Wednesday, June 20th, 2018. <laughs> Welcome to Gaming and BS, a tabletop RPG podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Sean. And I'm Brett. Welcome to the show. Welcome back, folks. Glad everyone's on board. Sean, how the heck are you, man? I am peachy keen, Brett. Well, that is good. That's very good. So, speaking of how people are, a little quick shout out to uh, Mr. Old School DM, Randy. Um, he posted up that he's uh, doing better. I know he had some, some medical stuff going on. Obviously, no need to go into details, but... Old school, glad you are still amongst us, and uh, always good to have you on board, brother. So, good to see you smiling. Yeah. Always, always want there. everybody around and healthy so that they can game. Exactly. Harder and more. Exactly. And we need to glean wisdom, because these guys always send us, like, you're wrong, you're right, hey, here's an idea. So, we get smarter by our listeners. So, all y'all stay healthy. Stay healthy and keep it coming. That's our message, and we're sticking to it. Amen. So, announcement-wise, the usual two. We've got Evercon uh, submissions are open, evercon.org. GameholeCon submissions open. Hey, um, Sean, did you get your submissions in? I have not. So, mine are in, as I said earlier, and they've actually been accepted. Whoa. So, yes, I got the uh, the announcement in ye old email. What did I put in there again? So, I've got a Blacksmith's Folly on Avalon Game. I have when next the moon is full, which is a little, that one is, oh, that's my uh, gumshoe game. Ooh, that'll be good. Yeah, those two. Those are the two I got in there, so that'll be fun. Uh, and you can get your badge now. Hello. Oh, that's right. Badges. Oh, yeah. Durr. I should do that. We should probably get our badges at some point before the last minute like we did last year. I didn't get one last year. I mean, I got a badge, but it was the day of. <laughs> yeah, you were, you're like a walk-up at the day of the con. You silly little Sean. Yeah, I think that throws my years off. I'm going to have to get Royce to fix that. You know what? No, I, I think I think you should just have to just live with your foolishness. That's what I think. Well, who gives a <laughs> shit what you think, Brett? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, hey oh. Damn. I don't need to take this shit standing down, ladies and gentlemen. Standing up or laying down or sitting down, whatever it is. Hey, want to thank uh, Phil and Senda for giving us a shout out at Origins. I think at one of their panels, they they mentioned us. Uh, so that was very. Uh, or, uh, Mr. Jason Hobbs had mentioned that. I believe. I, think, uh, I believe Phil used the uh, start at one and listen forward. Something along those lines. So thank you very much. Yeah, I heard um, the guys who were down there. There's some misdirected Mark crew. Kevin was there. <coughs> Excuse me, Tom Flanagan. Some of those folks, some BSers and whatnot. And uh, so all uh, all signs and reports back say Origins was a hell of a good time. And I'm hoping I can be back there next year. Maybe I'll drag Sean with me next year. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, drag me. I think we got to do it. Yeah. Thanks for Jason Hobbs from Hobbs and, Fr- Hobbs and Friends of the OSR for posting some pics to our community uh, from Origins. That was very cool. Yeah. Uh, I think... I think that's it. Shall we move on? Well, I went, to, I went to RPG, free RPG day. Oh, fuck. That's true. What, how, how'd that go? Um, it was good. I, didn't go, I don't go to that with a lot of expectations because I don't want to go in there. I don't. So, you don't go in with your arms out going, gimme. Yeah. So I've, I've, boo, I've manned booths. I've manned booths. I've, I've been at conferences and and had a table there for other things in my life Mm -hmm. and there's always the swag people that go around kind of like and they're they'll get a bag from one booth and then they'll stock it up from every other booth with goofy freebies whatever they are and you know it's they're there like tchotchkes are there to grab it and you know just spark conversation or whatever yes you know but these are just kind of hoarders they they grab their shit and kind of walk off and I mean, it, I don't know how many pens and crappy mugs can you have that? Whatever. Yeah, but I got all of them from Gen Con this year. Yay! No, well, I hear you. I hear you. So, um, but but free RPG day. I mean, the idea is it's to draw you into the store, 
yes. to get a goodie and peruse said store, listen to the shopkeep uh, regale you of their wares, and have he or she show you the coolest and newest thing that happens to be connected to the thing you're getting for free. And to run to run games, what have you. Now, now, I, I mean, if though for folks that are like, I'm going to go there and and get every piece and thing that you want to get. That's great. That's fine. yeah. That's their thing, man. Yeah. yeah, that's it. I go there and if it's not of interest to me, I don't want to grab it. Right? I'd rather I'd rather have somebody who's interested in it <clears throat> take it and go with it and run it. Right? Yeah. Right. I think that's just me. Not everybody shares that same opinion. I mean, it's like, hey, man, freebies. Uh, so I get it. So anyways, I went, um, and I didn't know exactly what was going to be there because sometimes stores will have um, all the offerings and some will not have all the offerings. So I think, like, um, Lamentations, I think it was, like, Big Cock or something. It was uh, Mystic Cock or something. It had a big yeah, rooster on the cover. Mystic Cock. Which is funny. Uh, I don't... I don't think where I went had it. I didn't see it. Um, but I grabbed, so I grabbed a couple of things for Mr. Drescher, who is an individual that could not make it. Mm-hmm. What'd you get? You got and goodies? I, yeah, I got him a couple of things. And and it was like, you can grab one of these, one of these, and one from here. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I didn't violate any rules of the store. But I got him the, um, the uh, Starfinder skitter shot. Okay. Uh, module. It, it, yeah. So I got him that, and then Overlight, which I'm not wholly familiar with. Uh, it's a role-playing game by Kaleidosco- Kaleidoscope Journeys. It's got some pretty cool art on the front, and even internally, actually. Um, I don't know much about the game, but I, got, I grabbed those for him because he had to work all day. Ah. And then I happened to pick up, I don't have it sitting here, um, Kids on Bikes, because that one did interest me. Yeah, that's a very Tales from Loopy type of thing. It my, is. At least that's my understanding. Yeah, and uh, I like. I thought it was well done um, from what I read and what it looks like. Um, you play kids, think Stranger Things. That's what it's kind of about. And then it's die type. And then there's a couple connections. Uh, and then each person asks a question positive and negative about your character with the relationship to the person to your like left. So there's a little bit of that collaboration going on. Hmm. But it's it's cool. I think it's pretty simple. I think it's pretty cool. It may be something that I run. I, I may actually so here's here's kind of the lesson. I may actually buy that game. Yeah, no that, that may, I mean that's the whole purpose, right? Hey, here's a here's a taste of a thing if you like it. Go do more, you know. Go buy more. That's right. Cool. Yeah, cool. but it's. I thought what how they produced their version for Free RPG Day was very good, very well done. Nice. Yeah, it was. Cool. Uh, you know, you can read it. Here's they do kind of the pre gen approach because in the full game you generate your own, but they kind of had mm-hmm. pre gens in there and they explained it, explained a couple of the rules, and then it's off to the races. So it's target number, die type, um, and then you have uh, shoot. I can't remember the. When you fail, you get a not an it's not inspiration. It's some type of t- token, and then you can use that to boost your die rolls. Cool. So yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I may run that. I may submit it to Game Hole Con. I may run it online. It's on my list to include Cold Shadows and whatever else I'm going to be <laughs> running around. <laughs> whatever else around you make with. up. Yeah. So anyways, free RPG day. Look for it next year at a local retailer near you. For those of you that couldn't make it uh, or don't have an FLGS a game store near you, it's unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, there was some interesting stuff. Did cool. you, get, you didn't get there, did you, Brad? No. No, no, no. Way too busy doing crap yeah. at home, and there's no gaming store anywhere within an hour of me. So, Right. Because I live in the middle of freaking nowhere. Yeah, he goes to work to be in the metropolis. <laughs> it's true. Goes to Gotham to work <laughs> from the the Iowa, Iowa countryside. Not quite Iowa. No, not quite. You're probably closer to Iowa. Than, uh, no, no, no. You're closer. Anyway. To, you're closer to Iowa than you are Lake Michigan. Yes, yes, that's very true. Right. Also closer to Iowa than I am Africa too. That's <laughs> more fair. more more true distance facts. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to mention free RPG day. 
thanks for local game stores that uh, did partake in that because not every game store has to. And so they fork out money for that stuff, folks. Believe it or not, they pay for that. So make sure yeah. you frequent and buy shit from them. Very cool. That's all I got to say about that. Shall we? We shall. Let's get into Random Encounter. Got a few this week. I will start because, Brett, uh, this will throw you off a little bit. So um, I saw this Jim Fitzgerald. Um, he tweeted out. Um, I'm sorry. Fitzpatrick. I'll have to edit that. Jim Fitzpatrick tweets out two thoughts on episode 195, which was the monsters. One. He's already planning on Knowles uh, as main baddie in his West Marches game. And I saw Jim at Free RPG Day, by the way. Oh, cool. He says, now it's going to be uh, MFing Were Knowles with blink capes. <laughs> <laughs> and two, Avalon Kickstarter add on stretch goal, bro- Broad. Brotherhood of the Sanitary Excavators. Shirt. Yes. With Stinky the Atiog mascot. So in the actual play, Streets of Avalon, there is Vera, the Atiug. Ah. So I have a couple. <laughs> I actually, Jim, have a couple different T-shirt ideas of, like, sanitary excavators, local 152 Vera's guys or Vera's team or something like that where you'd have the Atiug on it. So I've got – I actually have been thinking about that. So neat. I'm glad somebody else thought it was a good idea. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So for those that are partaking in Mr. Jim's – Fitzpatrick's West Marches game. You're welcome. <laughs> when your character is murdered by we're- motherfucking werewolves with blink dog capes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was us. That was us. Yeah, I hope he has them branded with like our logo on their asses or something. Yeah, well, I want to find a GBS somewhere burned. That, that, that's the clan somehow worked into the werewolf clan. That'd be cool, their tribe. Compliments awesome. to GBS. <laughs> awesome. Uh, go ahead, Brett, man. All right, well, we got Mr. Thomas Hook emailed us on the Monsters piece. Uh, the monster tweaks were awesome. Switching things around like this can give players just the challenge they were looking for. Ha-ha. <laughs> Plus, that always frustrates my rules lawyer. I can hear him filing his injunctions now. I really love the hide eater. I could just see a beetle type critter with small tentacles, kind of what a mind flare has. Just picture the tentacles wiggling around in some leather or skin while they secrete a slimy ooze that starts to dissolve the hide, and then the mouse starts slurping up the liquid. I also think they should fly. <laughs> Fucking A, dude. Yeah, uh, man. Yeah, let them yeah. fly, dude. <laughs> let them fly. He continues, how about the young are grubs that are often found anywhere old leather or hides can be found? You know, forgotten treasure hoards, a once fine prestigious library that has fallen into ruins. Many fine books are covered in leather. Maybe a dirty and grubby barbarian tribe that uses hides for tents and clothing. The tribe may be plagued with these critters because of poor hygiene. Young grubs eat slowly as they grow and are usually found in hides or cured leather, but the adult beetles are not as picky in what they eat. Not only leathers, but hides and fresh skin are also on the menu. Just think if you gave normal rust monsters flight. Oh my, oh my, if rust monsters could fly. I can hear this being sung to the tune of Dumbo. Ah, <clears throat> he carries on. Um, the inverted goblins were a great idea. I could see a group of adventurers walking into a room with one or more mirrors. Um, as the PCs start to look around a nilbog step out of the mirror, the mirror could be connected to an item or a mirror somewhere else's that traps the poor unfortunate souls into it and then kicks them out here, inverted, of course. Um... Where someone enters the well, where inverted, of course, where someone enters the room. It could be a goblin chief or witch doctor who uses the linked item to maintain his power in his tribe. Anytime a rival or naysayer attempt to take his power, the chieftain uses the item to dispose of the enemy. Great show, gentlemen. Please award yourselves a gold star. Until next time, keep the sword sharp and the wands handy. Thomas, that beholder's sword. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah, thanks, Thomas. That's good stuff. Yeah, and you know what? To hell with it, dude. Like, make the uh. The height eater invisible. Give him a visibility. Yeah. A blink, a blink height eater. Oh yeah, give him blinking. I mean, let's just flight. Well, and the other thing, you know, if it's eating hides, oh, this one just happened to eat the desiccated remains of a displacer beast, and it takes on displacer hide qualities. The the options are endless. <laughs> wow. Hey players, you're welcome. I think one of my favorite comments was. Uh, Round blessing on G plus. Remind me not to eat <laughs> while listening to that. 
<laughs> and somebody else had sucking your meat, sucking the skin off your meat like a Slurpee. That was another one. I'd forgotten I'd said that. Anyway, very cool, Thomas. Over to you, sir. Blake, Blake Ryan continues on episode 195, Tweaking Monsters. Great episode, a similar story to Brett's Yellow Musk Creeper. A while back, the ranger rolled up Wolf for his animal companion. Uh, now, I love wolves, but goddamn, they are used a lot in fantasy games. So I gave him a Veggie Pygmy. Awesome. Is it a Veggie? Is it Veggie Pygmy? Yeah, Veggie Pygmy. Veggie Pygmy. Called yeah. Jub Jub. Little, they're little bitty vegetable people. <laughs> Called Jub Jub. Why not? I like them already. They had limited telepathic empathy, and Jub Jub even helped bandage a PC or two in fights. However, what the PCs didn't see till it was too late is that Jub Jub was infecting every slain foe with his spores. <laughs> creating packs of veggie pygmies roaming the country everywhere the PCs had been. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. Man. That's funny. In the cities, Jub Jub would go out at night and infect cats, wounded people, rats, you name it. Jub Jub was not the bad guy. He was doing what plants do expand and procreate. Keep up the good work, fellas. A bunch of pygmies, they're not like, if I remember my monster manual, they're not like incredibly wicked or evil. They, they're just their nature. It's what they do. Interesting. Yeah. And <laughs> I guess you get like a jar of vinegar. No, jub jub. No. <laughs> Squirting with a jar of vinegar to jub, stop jub. him. Like it. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Let's see. We got Saul Morales um, about Brett Fields' episode. Um, after listening to Brett's gaming group's woes, it really ho hit home for me because the same sort of thing happened to me a few years ago. For quite a while, I was a GM for every game my group played since I had discovered space opera back in the early 80s. I ran uh, space opera and dark conspiracy and other RPGs. Then third edition came out and I started a campaign where everybody would play and then GM. That was my idea. After a while, I would get the, I'm not ready, I need more time, I'm thinking of a game, and many other excuses. It went from 3rd to 3.5 to Pathfinder, and all the while I was the GM for about 13 years. Of course, I wanted to play other games. My gaming bookshelf became shelves and out bookcases of games I really would like to play in, <coughs> Excuse me, but didn't because I was always the GM. I was doing fine, but there was always that one piece of straw, that one thing that's just too much. For all that time I was GMing, I really didn't get too much kudos or recognition or uh, recognition for doing all the GM duties. But only the GM, but I was... The GM dad. I sent out emails about getting together, when and where. I know that pain, dude. Yeah, um, I think that's a pretty common theme. It is. He continues, anyway, I got. I finally got two players to take up the mantle of GMing, and they were my brother and grammar school friend. But since they hadn't GMed since the late 90s, he took the game back on a tired trope of dungeon crawling. I was okay with that because I was finally playing. My brother was the first one to run a game, and then it was picked up by a long-time <clears throat> friend from grammar school. The GM... I GM the next session, and everything seemed to be going good. Went back to my more intrigue RPG instead of the hack and slash game they ran and, uh, and took the party out of the dungeon. Then the straw fell. We were at my brother's house for a New Year's weekend of playing board games with friends and family. I lived an hour away from my hometown, and we were leaving to go home. It was just me, my wife, and a friend that had hitched a ride with us. We're leaving. My brother and old friend started razzing me out how I messed up their adventures. I was, what are you guys talking about? They were griefing about how I took the party out of the dungeon, which they worked so hard to get the party into. Not, re <clears throat> not really it was you find a map. No, not really it was like you find a map. I was like, you guys both ran dungeon crawls? How could I mess up that for either of you guys? Our characters can always go back. No, this was after they both run their games and told me zip about any future adventures or adventure threads they wanted to run. Zip, nothing, nada. My friends and brother had gotten into this rut of making fun of my games. I ran at local conventions, home games, and always just talking crap. Even my wife and friend, who were giving me a ride, asked me what the hell they were talking about running their game once we got into the car. Ruining. Home. Ruining. Ruining their game once we got in the car to go home. Neither of them were in that gaming group. They both thought it was a bit, thought it was a bit rude to say as we were literally saying our goodbyes. I could totally understand Brett's anger. I talked with over with my wife and friend. I don't. It didn't make me feel any better. I stewed for a couple weeks as we finally played every week. I called another friend, Steve, who hosted the games at his house, and told him I needed a break from GMing and playing. That I wasn't going to be there anymore. He asked why. I told him what happened. He said okay, and that he understood. When my brother and friend got there. He told them what I had said, and basically, and they basically just shrugged their shoulders and said something like, "He'll get over it." 
This is what Steve told him. The next two game sessions came, and I went, and I didn't go. Came and went, and I didn't go. My friend Steve, game host, called me the second time and asked if I was going to show up, and I said, no, i pretty seriously not about, uh, about not playing Pathfinder with the current group with my brother's hometown friend. <clears throat> After a month goes by, my brother finally calls me and says, guess you're really serious about this. <laughs> now, my brother's pretty clueless. And he's kind of absent-minded professor type of personality. But I was upset, and he asked what happened, and I told him. He said that he didn't mean it the way I took it and that I was taking it too personally. Yeah, my brother can be that dense. It was personal. I just said to him, okay, see you later. Now, of course, I still talk to my brother and friend, but I won't run a D&D game for them. I've run one-shots and stuff with them and have gotten into run numerous different games with them online, but always it's a short-term game. We always rotate GM duties. So I let it go. It's not worth being angry or upset. People are the way they are, but I'm glad that you talked to your group, straightened things out, and fixed your problem. Brett, while you were sitting on that couch with Dr. Sean... I was on the one right next to you, too. <laughs> happy, uh, goodbye, and happy gaming to you, too. Awesome. Thank you, Saul. That's a good, that's a, that's a good story, man. I mean, other people have said things to me, either on social media or outside of it. It happens, right? Sometimes, you know, we don't get along with the group anymore. Something blows up or something changes, and uh, it's worth talking about, you know? wasn't very fun nor comfortable for me to say, hey, Sean, I'm going to tell everybody <laughs> that listens to us, like all six of you, that uh, that this horrible thing happened. Because it, really, it was really hurtful and very painful. So I'm just glad it's fixed. makes me feel better. You good, Sean? Ready? Yeah, man. Over to you, sir. Shane Freeman goes back to episode 195. When I sat down to create the current version of my campaign world, I was concerned with my players predicting the stock reaction of monsters and NPCs. To combat this, I made the decision to attach cultural and civic values to random groups as the PCs came into contact with them. Therefore, when I build encounters and populate locations, I roll to determine noble, common, or feral. Nothing confuses a group of adventurers like orcs of noble standing living in a Renaissance city or feral halflings who attempt to capture the party and roast them over an open fire with potatoes and carrots. <laughs> Dark sun halflings, man. Little cannibalistic bastards. Jub, jub, jub. <laughs> jub, jub. Nub, nub. Uh, the favorite so far is a city of high elves that are involved in a multi-clan blood war made more complicated by the fact that their god, Hell, yes, Loki's daughter, finds it amusing to reincarnate the dead randomly into the opposing clans, and then when they mature to adulthood, give them access to memories from their past lives. And I love the flesh monster. I will be using that soon. Sean, your your flesh monster, uh, that's a hit, man. Flesh yeah. monster was a big hit. <laughs> hey, wizards, call me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. All right. Well, excellent. Thank you for everybody that commented and wrote in on those episodes. We appreciate it very much. Uh, let's get into the main topic, shall we, Brett? I think we shall. All right. Main topic. You ready? Insert question here, Brett. <laughs> All right. Surrender. Running away. Sean, I've hinted at this before. Not hinted at We've talked about it a little bit. But I want to focus on this. There's a... Um, it comes down to a little bit to a balance of encounters and so on and so forth. But... Even when an encounter is balanced, <clears throat> if you're using um, like a true uh, Pathfinder, you know, run the uh, r- run the CRs, compare, contrast, da da da. There's always that chance the player's dice go completely sideways. The game master is critting left, right, and center because he's cheating and he's a bastard, and the poor players are just getting crushed, <clears throat> which apparently he's supposed to do. <laughs> and somebody says, you know. As Matt Colville says, somebody needs to say the uh, the five magic words. Marines, we are leaving. Right? You need, <laughs> from aliens. Marines, we are leaving. Somebody has to leave. Somebody has to run. And there is, apart from just the mechanics of how to actually get a group of people to run away, is the... I think sometimes I have... I've been in a very balanced encounter before. A buddy of mine ran... Back at 3.5, and he was all about balance. Everything was beatable, you know, by the numbers. And periodically, we'd be getting our asses handed to something. We're running. And he would feel defeated. He'd feel as a game master, he fucked something up. He would agonize over it. 
because I made the encounter too hard. You guys had to run away. I'm like, dude, did you see my dice? I was like, I couldn't roll over a six all night. Eric was getting, he, he couldn't roll over a 10. We couldn't hit him. Yeah, you guys should have been able to defeat him. We couldn't. We had to run away. That's me in every D20 based game. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have Game Master for Sean in a D20 game. I have seen him roll in person. That is not a lie. It sucks. Hey, Sean, why do you hate D20 games so much? Because I can never roll higher than a five on a D20. Ever. Sucks. <laughs> Excuse me. So we're just going to talk about kind of a little bit of mechanics, but also the kind of the hows and the whys in what is the game. Because sometimes the other thing that can happen is the players could just say, I don't want to fight this fight. We're leaving. They flee. And sometimes Game Master's... We lock up on that. We're like, uh, okay, you're running away. Do I hope to, should I chase them? What do I do, you know? So that's what we're going to talk about. We'll see where we go. Yeah, you throw more <laughs> monsters at them. Yeah, just just keep hitting them harder and harder. In the harder. direction that they are fleeing towards. Uh, flesh monsters and blink, uh, and blink uh, knolls. Blink, blink knolls. That's Very easy. Very easy. So, All right, so let's wrap this up. <laughs> uh, let's get on the die roll, Brett. Yeah, yeah screw those players. So anyway... <coughs> Damn, the allergies are kicking my ass today. So anyhow, why would your PCs want to want to run away? If you're playing even a balance game, there it's sometimes it's perception, sometimes as I say, it's die rolls. Even in the you know your sci-fi game, your Star Wars game, a story game, something that is kind of combaty, the players may decide they don't want to engage in that fight for a myriad of reasons. The counter is too big, right? Too much for them to handle. Um. Sometimes they get a point where they pushed forward too far too fast, right? That encounter is balanced or should be potentially right up their alley, but they went from room to room to room, to use a D&D analogy again, and they didn't bother to short rest. They didn't bother to rest at all. The cleric is out of healing spells. Nobody bothered to pay attention, and now they have expended resources that normally in said, in said fight against ogres, they'd be totally legit. They'd be fine. Sean, um... Have you, first off, I guess, have you ever, as a player, have you ever run away from an encounter? Have you ever said, that's it, we're out of here, bail? <laughs> that level of cowardice is beneath you, is that what I'm hearing? That is redonkulous. Of course I run from every encounter, <laughs> that's my M.O. Because <laughs> I can't roll above a five. I'll tell you what, here's what happens when you run away from every encounter. You live longer? You live longer, Hello. right so the other <coughs> excuse me the other one that i i have seen i've had done to me i've never been a part of it on the other side which i would love to at some point i've had the players go i we have an idea oh, I'm like, yeah. all right don't explain it to me i don't care do your idea and they set stuff up and then basically they start they start running away because they want me to chase them and i can oh. see it in their eyes i'm like you guys have some kind of a trap, some kind of a, I'm going to catch the bad guy unawares by doing the broken wing bird thing flopping. Oh, I get it. You can see it, right? And when I see them doing that, I'm like, huh, as the game master, do I do it? Do I follow? Because I can see it, right? They're laying out. They're laying the trap out there. And they're like, well, we've got the goblins good and lathered. We have poked the orc chieftain that was running this goblin band. We have insulted the uh, the troll guard he had. We've laid waste to a couple of the you know shaman's guards or whatever the deal is, and then we give ground. We want to see if we can get them to chase us back because we know where the the lava pit is or whatever. They've got this master plan. <clears throat> Generally speaking, I'm like, sure, yeah, let's do this. I want to see what happens. You know, enraged bad guys, if they're Average low monster intelligency thing, and you could always do morale checks. You there's perhaps mechanics in, in a game you're running to decide the uh, intelligence check or something to see if the creatures would fall for for this tactic. But usually, for me as the game master judging it, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, in this instance, these goblins, oh fuck yeah, they'll charge you. If it's a lich, if it's a vampire lord, you might be like, mm, I don't think so. I'm pretty pretty wicked smart here. You know, play it to the intelligence of the creature. Have you ever had your have you ever had players do that to you, Sean, where they're trying where they actually flee to set up some to, sort of tactical advantage? You know, Brett, if it's one thing I've learned from players is they do crazy stuff. 
and uh, are always able to catch you off guard, those dirty buggers. That's, that's true. They are. That they are. And that's kind of what they do. That's why prep and all that stuff sometimes, you know, it, it's hard to plan, especially when stuff like this goes awry. You just, you know, they're going to go down this hallway. They can't go anywhere else. But guess what? They do. They go they somewhere out else. Window. They figured they, out another way else to go. It's four walls. Door in front of them. They can't get through the door. They can't go backwards. Somebody's got the ring of tunneling that you forgot they had. They and, go uh, through the ground. Exactly. Like it's, it's inevitable. Something exactly. happens. Exactly. So, you know, when they when we talk about have we had if I had players do this, I'm sure I have. You still remember offhand? Usually, you've slain them all by then. Well, because they, tr- they they got off the ri- they got out of the box car. They fucking well, die. There's a problem with. Always killing player characters, not players. Player but characters, different player problem. characters, right? To clarify, uh, because you know if you kill the player characters and you do it frequently and often and in quick fashion, your your game's going to be short. Yeah, that's very very true. So if, some, you're, con- if you're constantly rebooting, <laughs> so playing. sometimes it's well worth it. I mean, hey, you know it's you know you got. You know, Real Housewives in New Jersey to watch. You know, <laughs> you want to get out. You want to just move it on. You got to get go. Hey, wrap it up. All right. Then maybe, but otherwise, you gotta you gotta balance that a little bit, of course. <coughs> Excuse me. So <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so I think I have I, based. <laughs> you where you're at, Brad? <laughs> Kinda. Um. Which is this is funny because you know what you said. You know, they're, the players are dirty little buggers. They do they do crazy ass shit. They always do. Hey, uh, I have and learned. I love them, and I love them just because of that. Oh yeah, I have learned though that at any given fight, anything can happen, and that includes the players, in my opinion, randomly deciding to run away for reasons I don't understand. Sometimes it's because you've been doling out damage, you don't realize that the 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 fighter has like ten hit points left, and he's and he's done the math and go. Every time I'm hit, I take 15 points of damage on average. I'm running, right? Because you're not doing all the math. There's a lot of stuff happening, and you're seeing this, and somebody decides, fuck all this, I'm leaving, and they bail. And the group's like, yep, that's it. Ron's running. We're off with Ron. And they just pile out. So, <clears throat> you know, given any any prep that you do, in my opinion, when we look at a fight, it's worth thinking in your head, well, what would happen if the players ran away from this? For whatever reason, would these things chase? Would they only chase if they think they can smother the party? Would they only chase if taunted, so on and so forth? Just ideas, a bullet point thought around it. Not that you have to add that much prep to every combat combat or whatever, but it's a, a thing that's in the back of my mind in any fight. These guys and gals playing with me, they could all bail. They could run out of this fight at any given moment or try to. They may not make it, but they can all try to leave. <clears throat> so it's one of those things that I think it bears keeping in mind. So what happens, Brett, when you think the opposite? Hey, I'm going to put this encounter in there uh, to keep them away, and and they're, I'm going to make them run away, and then yeah, they don't run away. That. Good luck with that. That's like making the player party surrender. You know what I'm going to do? <laughs> I'm going to beat them down and capture them. <laughs> That's that's as close to taking away the agency of the players in, as you can get, and that I have ne- I have tried that. It has blown up in my face every goddamn time. I'm going to make them run away. Nope. If you think that, then the next thing you do is, what's the next campaign I'm going to run? Because they're all. What's going to happen if they don't? I mean, that's the answer, right? Are you ready to start a new campaign, sir or madam? Why do you ask that, Brett? Because when they choose not to run away. From the flesh monsters and the blink knolls, and they all die, right? Because you've got a, you know, you you have the reputation. Everybody knows it's a Brett thing. Fuck balance. I'm not going to worry about that. The encounter isn't geared for me. You know, it happens to be whatever it is. Okay, you have to be prepared for the fact that the players don't run. Their characters might all die. You can't assume that they're going to run away or assume that they're going to surrender. 
especially surrender. I've never seen a group of players without a plan, mind you. I've never seen a group of players willy, what I would consider willy-nilly just say, all right, that's it, we give. Drop our weapons, hands up, we surrender. You know that's Throw a, myself at the mercy of the goblin. That's a really good point, Brett. And it kind of pisses me off when they don't do that shit. When they don't surrender? Well, it's like you could have, like, okay, I have three tanks, or I have an army around you. It's time, you know, the the big bad is up on their pedestal, <clears throat> monologuing, telling them, hey, here's your situation. You know, you can... Uh, it's time to throw down your weapons. Darth Vader, man, sit, have have a seat at the dinner table. He's he's forced taking your your laser Blaster. gun away. Pew pew pew. No, mine. Yes. Right. But no, these dirty buggers, man, they will not freaking surrender. It's almost as if players aren't given a copy of the script that you're trying to run. Hey. And <laughs> they would like to do what they would like to do. Well. Yeah, yeah. May- maybe. maybe, maybe, maybe they don't surrender, but I mean, is there a point, and we're getting off the beaten path here, but maybe there's a point where it's like, well, if they don't surrender, you know, you don't leave the the, the situation for anything less than what it is, which is like you're outnumbered, outgunned, and out hit pointed and out armor classed, and if you tend to like, I mean, if you want to be a martyr... Oh, totally. Yeah, I mean, the the key is is that at any given situation, in my experience, if you're like, this entire scene, this entire thing, this encounter, this event, whatever you want to call it, hinges on the players doing this specific thing for me, good luck. <laughs> the only way this entire adventure will continue Ugh. is if the players make a spot check in this room. That's a 25 spot check. They got to make it or no one goes anywhere. Who the fuck? What? You know, <clears throat> there's jokes about those types of adventures, right. old school ones that are out there. Similar, though. Well, the, the next phase of this adventure is escape from prison. Oh, um, Yeah, or, well, they have to get taken to the grotto, and then the grotto, they have to fight their way out, or that this is going to happen, or then someone else is going to come in and do something. I, I mean, I had this all planned. There's the problem. It's all planned. And if you get too structured with it, you're like, the players must run away. The players must surrender. You're never, I shouldn't say never. I would not bank on that. No. Well, no shit, right? Because when you come in with that mindset, you're like, they're going to do this. They're going to do this. And you get heavier handed. This is what I've seen, what I I have personally done. I need them to surrender. I need this to happen. If you need a thing to happen, (laughs) you start forcing that thing to happen. Whether you consciously, at least in my opinion, whether you consciously want it to or not, next thing you know, you're like, boy, these clubs I'm using on the players are just getting larger and larger. They just don't see. Yes, 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 yes. It's the lack of agency. It's the lack of ability to make a decision. Even if they look at it, the fight went completely casters up. They're like, wow, we are literally surrounded by the evil space overlords hordes. The troopers have got us. Blasters out. And it's a pool of lava behind us or death by blaster or surrender. Because the evil Sith Lord says, that's okay, kids. You just surrender. Step over here. Drop them down. Come hey, on. even Han Solo and Princess Leia surrendered on the moon of Endor. Yeah, that's because the script was really helpful for that, right? Well, I mean, I think there's like a misinterpretation on uh, just wanting to survive. Yes, that's, I guess what, hmm, that's a good point. Very good point. Because like, hey, if it's I, not orchestrated, like it happened, right? They're in Endor. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> and they're weaponless and surrounded. Uh, all right. Kind of makes sense. You know, you fell into a trap. It happened. It doesn't feel, if it feels concocted, contrived, or on the worst kinds of rails, they're not going to, the players aren't going to give it to you. Is that where you're going? I'm sorry. Cause you're talking about like just survival. Like, look, you either, you don't want to survive. Okay. The fight went totally badly. Half of you are down. The other half of you are almost down. The evil overlord says, surrender. No, to the death. Are you sure? Because I'm seriously going to fucking kill you all. Well, and is it every damn player character the person plays, too? 
when that situation arises. Oh, that's a player problem, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's kind of like maybe if you just surrender, you're, they're not. Obviously, if they want you to surrender, they're not going to freaking kill you. Otherwise, they would have just rolled for initiative and see who comes out on top. Yeah. But whoever thinks of that. I know. Now, I know there's players right now screaming at their podcast app and player going, yeah, man, I surrender. I surrender. I get it. It's no big deal. I mean, I'm not every, I'm not all the players you're talking about. And it oh, isn't it, all totally. the players. No, no, no. I just, I, I have had my group surrender and it's usually whenever gotta take, it's got to take a lot of force. Don't you, Brett? You're well, really a little bring bit down the hammer or they're like, well, it's clear we need to surrender, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was like back in the day. And I'm like, I don't bother. I don't bother to have their surrender be a key component. If <clears throat> the events of that evening session are going in such a way that's maybe they might want to surrender, I will do a thing where I'll be like, okay, if, if it's theater of the mind, recap the scenario. Okay, guys, just to be clear, he's down. She's half dead. She's dead. That one's unconscious. It's the mage and the thief, right? You're the two left standing? Oh, yeah, it's just us. Okay, and there's 20 of them plus the Lich King. Yeah. So he's eyeballing you, and he's yelling, surrender, and I will spare you and your friends. What do you do? And fire, then, fire, Fireball! <laughs> magic missile of the darkness. <laughs> and then there's a huckabuck of the players. I don't know what I do. You know, they, they can go back and forth, but... That is an in-the-moment, it's happening like, hey, just laying it out for you. Look at the table, guys. Look at the minis. You know, all the mooks that you thought you were going to be knocking off the table left, right, and center um, in your Savage Rolls game, they're all still there. Because <laughs> you guys can't roll. This is just, it's going badly. The You know, the bad guy sur- says, surrender. Drop your weapons. What do you think? No, we can take them. Are you fucking kidding me? Half of us are dead. You know, let them have that debate. You throw it on them. As a in the moment thing versus a heavy handed hammer thing. It's sometimes I guess what we're saying is it's in the delivery, right? If you deliver it in such a way that it feels in the moment and fresh, you have a snowball's chance in all of them actually surrendering. Gee, I I just don't see players a lot of times wanting to wanting to just quit, throw the sword down, and go, All right, I guess the Goblin King's got us. Just sit in jail for a while. Sean would. You, you'd surrender, though, wouldn't you, Sean? I would surrender. Like, I'd surrender. Like, hey, man, I'm all about Gladiator. I'm Hey, you got me. I give. I give up. Because there's going to be, unless the <clears throat> GM is a real character, <laughs> they're gonna. They should be giving you another opportunity to kind of break free. Or, I mean, yeah, I, I, mean, I would even. I don't want to stick them in a pen and, you know, be the puppet master for three or four sessions. That's that's no fun. Yeah, and for the next session, we'll get together and you guys eat gruel for the first session. <laughs> the second session is you getting beaten by the slave master as he forces you to dig rocks. The third session is, okay, fine, fuck it, can I make new characters? No, no, I want to live this out. <laughs> yeah, even I can't do that. That's just kind of ridiculous. And I would probably want to choke a GM that if they, they wanted to do that. So it's Exactly. I mean, so there's there's got to be kind of an out or maybe there's some plot point that's coming down the pipe. I mean, shoot, I think even in the slavers, right? Like Slave Lord series, like you start out in pens, right? Well, starting, we've talked about this before, starting in prison. We've had that. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> starting in a thing can be, is sometimes easier than the horrible drag out. No, seriously, guys, I need you to surrender because I'm totally going to make it cool. You know, can be there. Now, the other thing that, <clears throat> to flip it a little bit, and I don't know if this is of any help, but one of the things I've done to kind of grease the skids, you know, oil up the hinges on this thing is to say, hey, the goblins surrender. The kobolds give up because um, fighting to the death is not in everybody's best interest all the time. Right. Un- undead usually fight to the final death, yes. But chances are the uh, the kobolds that were jumping you because you happen to have a gnome in the party and they hate gnomes. and Just the- give them the gnome. 
Just give him the gnome. Give feed the him gnome. the gnome. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? You you beat him down. There's five kobolds left. You can do the morale check. You can do whatever you want. Right. Rule wise, <clears throat> or you could just say, you know what? They they surrender. They drop their weapons and beg for quarter in common. Oh wow! You're on the planet. You're fighting. You're fighting in the the stormtroopers. Like I don't want to die today, right? Because they're people. They're cr- they're critter critter critters 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 stuff. Sentient beings. That's the point. With capability of speech, or at least to be able to... creators, whatever that is. <laughs> you can do catch some creators out there. <laughs> All Man. right, everybody, thanks for sitting down at my table. <laughs> you might, uh, okay, roll for initiative. Got some creators that you got to take on right now. Wow, <laughs> so, so they became a muppet. I don't know what that sounds like. A muppet doing that. Anyway, point is, is that when when the players do a thing, excuse me, when the players have the same thing foisted upon them, it's like, so what do you do? Oh, you deal with the monster, so on and so forth. Doesn't have to happen all the time. When you're doing that, it can be at least I I see it as I'm broadcasting, forecasting to the players that this is a legitimate military tactic by these people, right? Goblins may surrender. Hey, guess what? A lone orc may be like, "Fuck it, I'll give up. I'll quit." I was just a you know, I was just a prison. I was just the prison guard. There's no need to no need to kill me if I don't have to die right now. I'll be happy to. Be happy to, you know, let you let you go or do whatever. So <clears throat> sometimes when it's kind of like I'm showing you that this is legit type of thing. And again, I don't normally very rarely have I planned to have a monster surrender. It's usually been like, boy, this seems like the right thing to do at the time, or the morale check says that's what you should do. But I don't normally plan for it. Same with running away. I norm I don't normally say the plan is after they beat the monsters bad enough the monsters run away or the stormtroopers will give ground because the Jedi have finally taken out fifty percent of their numbers or something. I, I don't have that plan in my head. <clears throat> and I don't know if that because it doesn't always work that way, right? Where if the game master shows you, hey, the the bad guys, the things you're fighting may well surrender or run away. You can, and you can too, surrender and run away for fun and profit. That might not be, <laughs> might not be enough. It might have to be like, look, guys, you can totally surrender, and I promise you, I'm not going to kill you. It might have to be that that meta game outside of the actual table event, saying, look, if you give up right now, I can guarantee you we're going to have a really cool prison escape here, but. The way this combat turned out, I didn't plan it, but uh, surrender's totally legit. I'll give you a bust out of prison option later if you want to do this. Otherwise, you're going to die. Sometimes that <clears throat> step out of the moment, level set with the player, saying, look, the way this combat worked, um, y'all dead. Unless you actually do what he says, and I promise you I won't kill you. We'll come up with something cool. Let's end it here tonight. Maybe that's the option, right, to get your players to to want to do it. Excuse me, or see it as an actual option, especially when you're like, "Boy, the dice turned on me," or "Wow, the player's dice turned on them," or whatever the case is. It it's just turning into a potential TPK, and the bad guy is such that he would not mind taking prisoners. Or you guys can run away is also an option. Sometimes you have to say that out loud to the players because they just plain forget. Because you get in the heat of the moment, you're busy throwing dice, trying to figure out you can win everything. Sometimes you got to remind people that um, you might not win this one, Chucky. You might got to run. Yeah, Chucky. Darn it. <clears throat> do your monsters surrender, Sean? Or do they all fight to the death? Depends on the monster. Okay. Like if a monster doesn't require a morale check um, or they're at a particular intelligence level, it may be uh, fight or flight. I mean, you know, it's it's a bear you know, unless you hurt it really bad, maybe the bear flees, but otherwise they're going to maul your face off. So I guess it depends on the monster. Most of the times, I mean, I don't know how many times I've run combats where it's always going to be to the death. All right, you killed them all. Good job. All right, search them. Okay, get some loot. Here's so many gold pieces. There is a, there is a level of, there's a level of monotony of kill them all, take all their stuff. And there's yeah, also a level, there's a level of also monotony monotony of oh look uh, five more goblins for the uh, goblin surrender train <laughs> should have should have brought a cage to put in all the goblin refugees we're apparently gathering on this on this uh, you know cleanse the hills of the evil goblins 
I got 20 of them. They just surrendered. What the hell do I do with them? When monster, <laughs> even when monsters do it, it can. Um, so when monsters do it to PCs, you get the wonderful. Some jackass is going to want to torture everything to death. Somebody's like, "Oh, kill all the babies!" Oh, for God's sakes! You know, you're in Brett's game, so it's legit. Or, um, you know, no, we don't take prisoners. Or you don't know what to do, and you get these moral dilemmas your characters get to deal with. We've talked about that type of thing before as well. The other thing I have found is that when I have had players <laughs> give in and go, "Yeah, I guess we ought to run away," or "Ah, fine, fuck it, they caught us," type of thing. <clears throat> If through that process, if if they buy in and say, yeah, okay, I get it, we're outnumbered, the evil Sith Lord has said, come over here, otherwise it's the lava or the lasers in the face, fine. Through that transport, through that effort, they begin to learn of the moral dilemmas of the NPCs. It's an opportunity to say, hey, this guy, the evil Sith Lord, actually is questioning something. Or, hey, the five stormtroopers with him, there seems to be one of them that doesn't want to do what he or she is being ordered to do, right? <clears throat> and you can take that opportunity when you're taking that moral dilemma. And it's a little bit on the outside. What you're doing is is showing insights to the players that, hey, while you're captured, you are paying attention because you're not stupid. There's, this has gone from we surrender to how the hell do I escape? And how the hell do I escape comes down to paying attention and looking for opportunities. And some of those opportunities are, you know, hey, Lord so-and-so can't stand lady thus and such. And, hmm, knowing those pieces, what can I do to leverage that to get out of here type of thing? Does that make sense, Sean? Yes. So I guess we kind of wandered back into how to make a prison escape interesting, but it's, I was just thinking about different things that have kind of, after after my gaming group and I went wrong, just trying to think about, hey, I want to run a different campaign at some point. What am I going to do? How do I want to do it? And just noodling through things that have never really worked well for me. And I will reiterate that if any time I've planned that this must happen in order, for, this is the cool thing to happen tonight. If the cool thing for your session is the players will run away or the cool thing is the players will surrender, that's a bad cool thing to bank the whole evening's gaming on. Because unless you heavy hand smack them upside the head, they're not going to want to do it. I can almost guarantee you. Sean doesn't agree or does agree. What do you think? I agree. You do. Okay. I right, do. You, do you agree with the whole plan for the players to run away just in case? Kind of keep that in the back of your head. Yeah, I mean, I I, I got to roll with got to roll with it. Whatever. I mean, I expect. I think you gotta just not anticipate what's gonna really happen. Yes, you can anticipate that they are going to meet baddies. They're gonna run into them. A fight may or may not break out. A surrender. A surrender may or may not break out. So you could play the odds. I think a lot of us will know. All right, I got a group of goblins. They're gonna ambush these guys, or they're gonna kind of scope them out. And then depending on what the goblins do, like if they hide and they're creeping around, or maybe it's just an all-out trap, you probably know in your gut what direction it may go. And if you know your players, if you played with them for a while, you could be like, hey, there's no way Mary's going to let this back. Her dwarf hasn't let a goblin live yet. There's no way that she's going to run from five goblins. That's not happening, right? Right. Okay. So. Now, knowing that it's not a, I mean, it's it's not, it's, that's the beauty of the randomness that is players. That's so, true. So, you know, they may, uh, you're like, oh, this is definitely going to be a combat, so I'll put a combat encounter, and then it's not a combat encounter, and then the encounter takes maybe 10 minutes versus an hour. Okay, well, hey, man, roll with it. Yeah. I mean. Very, very true. There isn't a wrong answer in role-playing games necessarily. It really isn't. And I think sometimes we get into that mode. I mean, I am, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen. And I, I've been, you know, I've neglected that. But I'm, I'm overcoming it. Well, it's true. I mean, we, especially when you think of what what would I do and you tend to, th- yeah. No, I, I'm with you. There's There's certain things that are bad and wrong, you know. 
being an absolute asshole. We've talked right. about safety yeah. at the table, those type of things. <clears throat> but put that stuff aside and like, look, if you know your group, you're like, look, they, they don't mind surrendering. Fuck, they surrendered five times last campaign. You know, maybe that's a thing they do. Maybe they have a strategy for that. As I said, draw a foe into a trap or do something. Sometimes, um, I do recall at one point, I think it was Zave had, he surrendered on purpose and told the rest of the players, kind of in a bizarre meta, kind of a plotty thing, because they're going, oh my god, we're half dead, what do we do? He's like, I'll surrender with JR, and you guys stay down. Because you're not dead, you're just unconscious. We'll try to get them to take us away from here. They may loot your bodies or whatever, but at least you'll live. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea, type of thing. Where they're left alive, <clears throat> assumed dead, right? Or the heat of the moment, the bad guy comes in, swoops them up, and walks out with them, type of thing. <sighs> so the players may opt to do it. There, there's a lot of opportunities, and I think sometimes when when it gets in that state where you're like, wow, I didn't plan for it to happen, or even if I did kind of hope it would happen, they would surrender, or yes, I really hope they would run away, it doesn't hurt to to bring out, to kind of break the uh, verisimilitude of the, of the event and say, guys, look, running away is legitimately an option. You know how to get back to the next safe zone in the dungeon. You know how to get off of this fucking planet onto your spaceship and get out of here. You can go to hyperspace right now, and you'll lose these guys. You know this. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes it's they're locked in the combat mode and they're not thinking outside of it. And some game masters would be like, look, that's just the way the dice roll. You know, the players aren't smart enough to think of that on their own. They're dead. And that's a way to roll. If you and your group are cool with that, totally fine. But for me, I do have a tendency to say, just so you know, this is legitimately, legitimately a thing. Sometimes, simply because you're looking at the players, you're like, I don't think they're thinking of the very obvious thing that's staring them right in the face. And sometimes that's run away. Or you could surrender. Or whatever the case is. So sometimes I've used those moments to bring it up. And nine times out of ten, they're like, yeah, Brett, but uh, fuck that monster. <laughs> and then they die. <laughs> okay, that's fine. You know, that's what you want to do. But So, anyway, I think, is that it, Sean? Is that about it? I think we're done. I think it is, man. Otherwise, we're going to keep hashing over the same same thing we've been talking about for the last 35 minutes. Christ. It's like what we always do. But anyway, I'm sure somebody else out there, one of our listeners, has done this better than Brett and Sean. And uh, they can tell Sean and Brett how to do it better or what you've done um, to help uh, deal with these situations yourself. You know, like I say, running away is is legit. Not everybody wants to. Um, How do you... What do you do to coerce or help the players realize that it's legitimate if that's a, a way they want to play? And, you know, have you has anybody ever actually seen forcing players to surrender work where the players don't want to burn you in effigy? So, anyway, I think we're good, man. Shall we die roll it up? Yeah, let's die roll. <clears throat> let's roll them All dice. Right. Reach in my bag. Chuck them on the table. You ready? Success! I've only got one, but it's kind of cool. It's a short little horror film. Uh, somebody posted it up on Google+. Plus. I posted it into the Google+, Plus community. If you're not a fan of horror films, it's not, like, terrifying, but it's got got, got its moments. Um, and I saw it. It's called The Birch. And it reminded me of taking something that isn't necessarily scary, like, say, a rust monster, and turning it into something that wants to slurp the flesh off your leg. Yeah. So, yeah, The Birch. I don't want to give it all away. It's a short little bit. If you're into it, it it's it was a fun watch for me. So anyway, I wanted to share that with folks here. Sean, what have you got? Well, I'll tell you what I got, Brett. I got the Origins Awards. Boom! So nice. if you didn't get to Origins uh, and you want to know about some, some cool stuff that's out there, uh, the Origins Awards 2018 winners have been posted. Of course, they're not posted on Origins' website that I could find. Why would they do that? No. Um, but ICV2, I think, has posted the the wieners. I also had tweeted them on our Twitter account. Yes, you did. Um, so they, congratulations to all nominees. Congratulations to winners of Origins Awards. Some, I think it's a cool, some of these like Ennies, Origins Awards, despite what you may consider or think of award 
honors. Some people are like, yeah, it's great. Some people are like, eh, it's a popularity contest, blah, 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 which is fine, but it's still a good list of things that are out there that you may not be aware of that are is getting recognition um, either by uh, friends of yours or peers in the hobby or other influencers, but still um, worthy to check out. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. Secondly... Diana Jones Award 2018 nominees have been uh, posted. Oh, so cool. If you're wondering what that looks like, actual play is an actual nominee, mm. right? Because it's kind of the year of actual play. Um, so the award will be um, given the, I think, the first night of Gen Con, if I'm not mistaken. That Gen Con. <laughs> actual play, for some reason, critical role up there. I don't know why that is. It is cr- critical role or just actual play? I don't know. That's what I'm just seeing for actual play. I'm just oh. reading the thing. Ah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. There's a few other. I think there's the 200 RP, the 200 word RPG challenge. Yep, is that's a, there. Is in there. I know that set it up by local Matt Forbeck. Yeah. Is, is instrumental in the uh, Diana Jones Award. That is a a. In, if I'm not mistaken, that is an industry peer award type category, and I think so. Influence. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Forbeck is such a cool dude. If you have a chance to meet Matt Forbeck at a con, you can't find a friendlier, more easygoing guy who, if he's got five minutes and you want to talk to him, he will take five minutes for you. Quiet, quietest guy I know. Doesn't, doesn't say a word once you meet him. Shy, no. Shy, shy person. Shy as hell. Shy as hell. Doesn't, won't drink, won't drink with you at all either. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, I've always had, he's just. He's one of the guys when you you hear the story about how nice Matt Forbeck is, he's nicer than that. Yeah, that I can say that with confidence. Yeah, he's really down to earth, nice guy. Good and dude. so we we jib, we give him some grief here, Uncle Matt. Hi, Uncle Matt. <laughs> Probably doesn't hear this. <laughs> oh, I don't uh, know. He's, got, he's got better things to do, like right. write novels for a living. Yeah. Anyway, what do we got from our listeners here? Listeners, uh, Jared Rasher on Google Plus had shared incremental skill checks. It's kind of a reference sheet that he had put out there. I thought it was pretty good. Um, it's on a, somebody's Google Drive. I can't remember exactly whose it is. It might be his. Um, but anyways, it's out there. You can take a look at it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, Eli Kurtz. So here's some some go buy some stuff. Uh, buy some stuff. Kick in some money. For the rest of these, Eli Kurtz, a uh, friend of the show, uh, also a supporter of the show, points out Velvet Generation. Um, it's one of his buddies out of Chicago. Uh, it's a Kickstarter, essentially cosmic rockers fighting the man with the power of music. I mean, come on. So the yeah, kick- Kickstarter ends July 11th, um, and as <clears throat> of this recording, it's not funded yet. So... Okay, got a little time. July 11, 2018. Check that out. Hey, you know, I got one I got to throw in here. Goblin's Henchman. Yeah. <clears throat> just when you said this, it just dawned on me. I forgot to throw this in there. In honor of Free RPG Day, he put out a PDF in our in our G Plus community uh, featuring a collection of 22 system neutral uh, magic items. So I'll mm. throw a little link out there, but it's in our G Plus community, uh, Goblin's Henchman. Another stand up gentleman, uh, scholar, and a gentleman who always has some really cool stuff to share. So I'll put that out there as well. Excellent. Uh, Jack Neller. Reminds us of the 5E Humble Bundle that's going on currently up until June 27th. So if you get this a little bit later, it may be gone. Sometimes they've been known to redo these Humble Bumbles. Humble Bumbles. Humble, humble Bundles. Now that of us can speak, apparently. So this one's like 381 bucks worth of digital digital books. Some of it from Frog God Games. Our buddy Alex Cammers, Game Hole Con Publishing, has some items in that. So... Uh, as a shout out to to our buddies, um, all the proceeds go towards the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society. So oh, very nice. Yeah, they give away the you pay what you want. <clears throat> At certain levels, you get more items. Um, but yeah, it, they always put it towards some decent charity. Uh, the last one, Pete Watson Wales. I hope I got your last name correct. Pete pointed this out. The Triumvine Kickstarter. Uh, so Triumvine is a tabletop RPG focused on non-combat-based challenges and strong narrative, creating engaging, powerful moments. 
It also does away with traditional fantasy lore, combining an entirely new pantheon and set of races and a complete bestiary. Uh, it draws inspiration in its style from the Impressionist art movement and mechanically from modern games like Numenera, Blades in the Dark, and Dungeon World. It is funded. It does end June 30th, if you want to get on that. It is it, the, the, the artwork and the style of, the, of what he shows on the Kickstarter is pretty impressive. Um, and it's like, I think it's blown its target out of the water. Yeah, he was looking at, it's a, it's a UK base, but he was looking at $2,000. He's at, uh, as of today, right now, June 19th, he's at $10,033. So yeah, he's a little bit over that two grand. Very cool looking. Neat. Yeah, so <clears throat> check that out. So that's it for Die Roll this week. Brett, insert inevitable question here. Yes, next week we will talk about game like it's a con. I'll leave that just hang there. We'll talk about more next week. Oh, yeah. cliff. It's like a cliffhanger. Like a cliffhanger. Or a uh, Brett's tired and doesn't want to expound on it hanger. One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We'll see what next week is. So there we go. All right. Excellent. Well, thanks for everybody that's tuned in. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, we're putting some of these up on YouTube. You can actually see us talking about this episode and see Brett's facial expressions that are just crazy and nuts. Or when I stare blankly at the screen, like, what the fuck is that dude talking about? That's exactly. Or, dude, are you listening to me? Are you fucking listening to me? That too. That happens a lot. Yeah. Things you can only get from body language, ladies and yes. gentlemen. Watch Brett drink scotch on camera. So do us a favor. Go out and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you subscribe and you watch them, great. If you don't, hey, that's cool too. Always but do, good. But do us do us a favor there. Otherwise, hey, this is Sean. And this is Brett. Good night and good game and all. This episode of Gaming and BS brought to you with the help from the following BSers. Corey Wynn, Graham Miner, Andy Hall, Joe Swick, Brett's biggest fan, Mark, Forrest Gary, Mark Anthony Benedetti, Eric Jeppesen, Sean Nicholson, Tim Jensen, Remy Bellado, Jason Hobbs, Hobbs, Wayne Humphrey, James Carpio, Pure Mongrel, Lord Tentacle, Corey Johnston, Brandon Barnes, Dan LaValle, C.W. Mellencamp, The Lost Sailor, Misdirected Mark Productions, Christopher Gray, Finolf, Merkel Froelich, Eileen Barnes, Tony Sugarloaf Baker, Todd Crapper, Alexander Auerbach, Neil Benson, Chris Steele, Eric the Hoff Hoffman, Kyle Winter, Curtis Takahashi, Mark Tasaka, Larry Hout, Ray Otis, Ron Bishop, Craig Huber, Xavier G, J V, John Hammersley, Closet Gamers, John Steve, Jared Rasher, Mark Richmond, Thomas Hook, Blake Ryan, Chad Gleyman, Sky, Roger Braslett, Evan Harrison Cass, Craig, Howard Bishop, Jim Fitzpatrick, Peter Skeins, the Knights of the Night Crew, Josh Wallace, Corey Welch, Eli Kurtz, Petiri Turtianen, Edwin Nagy, Bruce Cunnington, Aaron Coleman, Tim Short, Stephen Dragonspawn, Ao Nagy's, Rolfer Guild, Gordon Cranford, Eric Salzweedle, George Sedgwick, Kevin Lovecraft, Matt Cyberlick, Jack Neller, Robert Nemeth, Eric Bontz, Palladian, and Ron Blessing. For ways to support the show, head over to GamingNBS.com forward slash support dash us. Thanks, BSers! This, this has been a Litterbox, Litterbox Studio, Studio production. production.